Hello, everyone. My name is Zachary Dombrowick, and this is my presentation on my APE uh, portfolio done for Eastern Washington University for the Master's in Public Health program. So just a little bit of introduction uh, for the APE. There was four main purposes for this APE that I developed, or the APE and what the projects I developed during my time during it. Um, first was address, it was for addressing wait times, long wait times, long work queue lengths, low schedule utilization, and high employee turnover rates. Um, within the, so for the APE, give me a sec. Okay, for APE, I conducted my APE at Providence Epilepsy Neurology Clinic, which is the medical clinic I currently work at. It is a specialty outpatient clinic um, that treats a patients suffering from epilepsy, seizures, and movement disorders, make mainly Parkinson's. Um, my original um, supervisor for this APE was Nicole Smith. She was a clinic manager at the time. However, she has since uh, about a week and a half into the APE, she went on FMLA and has since resigned from the position. So after she had gone to FMLA, I had to cho choose a new mentor um, to uh, supervise me during my APE. And I chose Dr. Natasha Sparrow, DO, one of the main providers at the clinic. Uh, I chose her because she's already been such a great mentor for me during my time at the clinic outside of my uh, classes and my work in the APE. Mainly, uh, she helped me make the decision to switch to the DO track or the MD track for med school. And as part of this APE, I completed two major work products. And in my terms of the role that I had at that clinic, I was still doing my main job as a patient care coordinator. However, th for the APE itself, it became a, a unique balance of doing about half the day where I was doing my actual PCC role and working for the clinic. And then the other half of the day, I was working on my APE uh, projects and trying to find that balance between there for the, the six weeks I did the APE. Um, so the two major products that I worked on during the time of this APE were as following. I made a new higher float training binder um, and went and did create new materials, things like that, update the old one, update our contact lists. And then the other one that major one was creating a scheduling master list tracking sheet to track uh, work queues and their patients scheduling patients who hadn't been scheduled yet as well as wait lists and i did that through the use of excel and converting it from the work queues used in epic as they are lack a lot of accessibility options and personalization and are harder to read and it was hoped that by making it an excel sheet could be personalized and made it easier to read by anybody who used it. All right. So then in terms of the activities that were create, actually completed for each of these products, in terms of the training and float binder, um, first, I reviewed the current binder um, that we had at the time, which was only, I think it was like maybe six, seven pages, and went through, reviewed what was in there, removed anything that was outdated that we didn't do anymore or things that needed to be updated that we wanted to keep but need to be updated. And then also just took the things that were okay, set, ready to go, and just could just be transferred right over to the new binder. I then had discussions with my coworkers and my uh, other managerial staff at the clinic. And we kind of discussed uh, the things um, that we think that we should include in this new binder, that, new binder that weren't actually included in the original binder what we think would be best in terms of training, like what would were the most important things that our clinic does that they need to be trained on to start in the job. And also using, taking into account what I had learned in my experience, having been here almost a year now, over a year now, um, and using that to kind of also guide my thought process of what should be included, what were some tips and tricks that I really felt could benefit people if they knew right off the bat rather than having to wait to learn it like five or six months into the job. Um, after that, reviewing the new procedures that we came up with the list and reviewing those, making sure that we're all set to go, adding things, removing things that we decide later on, maybe, eh, maybe, doesn't need to be in the binder, that's just something we can just mention. And then finally, it was actually going ahead and creating those materials and um, getting them ready 
having them reviewed by Dr. Sparrow and my coworkers, making sure they were ready to actually go into the binder. And then it was about actually taking those, organizing them into sections and that made the most sense and group things together by kind of what their purpose was. So in terms of, if it was about referrals, it went to the referral section. It was more our daily duties. It went to that section. And then also using those kind of chapters sections to really kind of build a, a built in like scheduling agenda of like, or not scheduling, but like a training agenda. So when a person starts the clinic, we start in that first section and then we move consecutively into each section. And then finally, another big thing with this one was updating the contact list because the contact list that we had was about five, six years old, had a lot of numbers that were no longer in use or a lot of people were listed on there that were no longer even at top rates. And then the other product, the scheduling tracking sheet, masterless tracking sheet, um, first was creating those the work you tracking sheet part of it, um, creating all the, di the different columns in Excel, and then also creating a wait list. Um, sheet and then going through and I also created a schedule opening tracking sheet which was separate um, and it kind of just shows um, what the openings were for the next month for the provider. Um, I specifically said remind all to Dr. Sparrow but these I also had blank copies that I provided to my coworkers that could, so that they could then adapt them for their provider. Um, as part of those tracking sheets as well I uh, spent about three to four days going through and um, transcribing all the patients in the work queues on Epic into my Excel sheet and then created a schedule for myself to check every two days and add new patients that had been added in into the work queue into my Excel sheet. So I was making sure I wasn't missing anybody. And then finally, the another big thing was uh, brainstorming and brainstorming new scheduling approaches. Um, and then also with that, after brainstorming them, talking about them with my coworkers and us deciding what we think would be, uh, what would work best, we actually went ahead and and I actually, I shouldn't say we, I actually um, went ahead and tested some of these out to see which ones were going to be more viable for the clinic in the wrong one, long run and which ones weren't. And then just below is just a screenshot of a um, what a tip what a typical set schedule might look like in Epic for the and, and it shows openings and how it shows openings. And then for in terms of the competencies that my APE fulfills uh, for the program, um, first, the first main one that it fulfilled was CEPH number eight, which is apply awareness of cultural values and practices to the design or implementation of public health program, public health policies and or programs. Um, so for this one, my both of the, my projects really uh, address this one. Um, more the scheduling. Um, scheduling did it more so than the training manual, just in the uh, fact that I was taking into consideration all my coworkers and the managerial staff's their input, and also the fact that with those training or with those new scheduling approaches, um, taking into account when patients are more likely to be on their phones, or making the acknowledgement that, hey, some patients might not even prefer phones due to some, they may have some cultural thing, uh, cultural uh, approach to phones that we don't follow that they do. And just trying other options or ideas of reaching them. Also making sure that we're um, uh, acknowledging that a lot of our patients that we see need interpreters and things like that. And necessarily won't understand English when we try and originally call to call and schedule them. So making sure that we have a way of getting interpreters online with us to actually schedule that. Um, and then the training manual was more so the acknowledgement that um, not everybody learns the same way. So having multiple different avenues of um, if it was just text on there or as more as like an actual diagram and flow chart of like where things go and things like that or what step step like here's one step okay flow chart two here's the next step things like that and um but this one just the fun as this um picture shows up here um in terms of function of cultural values the two main ones that these two projects really address were this interaction with others and then also this set of rules and making sure that we're following those
the next CEPH competency that was fulfilled by this project or this APE was CEPH9, which is designed a population-based policy program program or intervention, which was mainly the scheduling master sheet project that I was working on, um, starting from the design, making sure that it was rooted in helping our patients to um, making sure that um, it was uh, formatted in a way that I was going to be calling those patients I've been in the work queue for so long first to make sure that they get scheduled and then moving forwards towards more recent patients. But making sure it was really rooted in that population rather than doing it just as a, oh, this is an easier way for us to see. This is more um, rooted in, okay, this is really being done to help the patients in that population. And just to the right, you'll see a couple screenshots. Unfortunately, I couldn't uh, provide screenshots of the fully filled out um, sheets due to HIPAA laws. But the top one is the um, sheet within the Excel file that is for the actual scheduling work queue and the patients and all their information that I use to track. And then the bottom one is a screenshot of the waitlist as the waitlist uh, work queue in Epic is also not as user friendly and this it you have to know the exact date that you schedule a patient and put them on the waitlist in order to pull them up in the waitlist on epic so this is an easier way so we can just go in and actually look and see that they're on the waitlist the third competency that was addressed by the ape was ewu3 which is created a strategic plan for both for a public health program both of these uh both of these projects fulfilled this competency, and I had separate meetings with my supervisor, with Dr. Sparrow, with my coworkers about each of these, creating strategic, unfortunately, we didn't create physical documents, but creating strategic plans about how we were going to implement this, whether it was going to be more of a fast, like, oh, we're just going to immediately do it, or if it was going to be a slow introduction, implementation of it, and going over what potential side effects this could have on different departments or different groups of our patients, and had many meetings and long discussions about this before we implemented them. And we kind of follow, this is one of the ones we kind of followed, uh, this diagram of kind of following, making sure that we had all of our um, aligned goals and creating those and creating those visions, diagnosing the problem and creating that plan for ourselves. And then also how we plan to execute it and then doing evaluation at the end to really make sure Okay, so we, this went well here. How can we improve it the next time we try to do another small implementation of, implementation of this? Then the fourth competency that we fulfilled or that was fulfilled by this program was EWU number two, evaluate a public health workforce assessment for efficiencies and outcomes. This is mainly the binder, using the binder, the original uh, binder that we had before I created a new one as a way to evaluate our current procedures, see how efficient they were and also see the outcomes of uh, in terms of turnover rate and also how they were affecting our patients and then using that to guide how I put together the new binder and put together the new procedures and create the new materials to make sure that everything was clear. There wasn't a lot of room for questions or not room for questions, but um, making sure that it was easier to understand so that it went prompt a lot more questions and everything was really laid out, making it more efficient and easier for these PCCs to do these procedures and hopefully thereby making it a, a simpler process for our patients. And to the right is a screenshot of the main, uh, of the first page of that binder. And then finally, the last um, one, the last competency that this program or this APE fulfilled fulfilled was CEPH number 19, which is communicate audience appropriate public health content, both in writing and through oral presentation. Again, this is mainly the binder, both in the creation of an actual written document, but then also using that written document in its sections to guide the trainings and create an agenda for those trainings and present them to the new float PCCs and the new hires. And also in terms of this presentation, which also fulfills that of writing and then also 
presenting on it. And again, just the same screenshot of the um, of the first page of the binder. So in conclusion, as I said, AP summary. Um, for my APE, I worked at Providence Epilepsy Neurology Clinic in Sacred Heart Hospital. Um, my supervisor was Dr. Natasha G Natasha Sparrow D O. And during my time in the project or APE, I completed two major projects. I completed a and created a new higher float PCC training binder, and I created a tracking sheet for scheduling work cues and weights. Key takeaways from the from this AP experience: one, and this is something I struggled. I struggled with both of these. My was first developing the APE first, making sure that what I did, the APE and the projects I uh, decided to work on are fully inspired by the needs of the community rather than just being something I think would be, I you'd think would be easy to implement, making sure it's actually something that will benefit the community that you are helping or working towards helping. And then the other key takeaway was just making sure the project itself is achievable as uh, it in some, in some instances, some people may want to decide they really want to take on this big like systemic issue but they're not going to be able to do that with the amount of time they're allotted or they can't do it with just one person. So making sure the project that you decide on is actually achievable and something you can do within that time allotted and something that if need be, you can do yourself by, by yourself rather than something that's going to take a lot, maybe years to address and fix. And then kind of just reflecting, um, this APE allowed me to take a allowed for me to take a more public health focused look at the work I'm doing and just to uh my goals at the at my workplace to be more about helping the patients rather than just doing the job and just showing up to do the job rather than actually helping patients. And then um also allowed for me to recognize areas uh uh, for improvement in my work and where I could spend the most time um, thinking and really helping uh, doing things in the way I, I schedule and work to then to further help those patients. And finally, it also allowed me really to recognize the strengths and weaknesses, both in um, my public health and what I've learned in my time in the public health program and where my strengths are in that, in public health, where my weaknesses are, but also my strengths and weaknesses in terms of the job I'm doing now and using my strengths to really iron out and address those weaknesses and turn them into strengths. So thank you and have a great day.